Listen, before we get into this, I just have to say, wow. After yesterday's video, we raised over $50,000 for the Y'all Fund. Vince, Brandon, and I are gonna go back to Southeastern Kentucky tomorrow with as many people and resources as possible to help those flood victims like they never thought they'd ever be helped. You are changing lives. Thank you so much, Y'all Squad. You don't know how much this means to the community down here. So many people are going to be positively impacted by your contributions. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, more rain is on the way to many people who don't need it, including Eastern Kentucky, as this stalled out frontal boundary just won't move, it won't budge. This is likely going to lead to more flooding disasters for many, but at the same time, a lot of other people are dealing with a heat wave and an ongoing drought. The weather pattern is literally feverish right now. It's hot in some places, cold in other places, wet and dry simultaneously, and it's extreme on both ends of the spectrum. Just look at all these potential storms today. They're going to be sliding over the same areas over and over again on the simulated radar. Check it out. 4 p.m. today, we're dealing with heavy rain from Nashville back towards Little Rock, and of course, around Knoxville up to Charleston. This is where we actually have that moderate risk of excessive rainfall today, kind of focused on southeastern Kentucky. It doesn't look like we're going to see like severe weather. It doesn't look like these storms are going to have quite the same punch as the last round, but still the ground is super saturated it can't hold much water and any water that falls is going to go directly into those creeks and rivers and they will rise let's take a look at the precipitable water values and explain why we're so concerned with these rain showers you see any thunderstorm that happens over here where there are higher p watt values like the reds and the purples is going to have more rainfall with it than a storm that forms over here for example in nebraska where the p watt values are significantly lower so as you can see we're above two and three over here where we expect to see this flash flooding and that moisture kind of stays in the same area throughout the duration of these rain showers. If we take a look at the official precipitation forecast from the Weather Prediction Center, you can see that things are going to get a lot worse in eastern Kentucky before they get better as the bullseye for the most rain out of anywhere in the U.S. through Tuesday, August 2nd at 8 a.m. is going to be right here uh, where we have been dealing with this flooding. And look, it also stretches down into eastern Tennessee, southwestern Virginia, into the mountains of North Carolina. Carolina. Additionally, we're going to see quite a bit of rain back here in Arkansas, northern Mississippi, western Tennessee. This will be welcomed rain. However, if enough of it falls in a short amount of time, there will be flash flooding. Even if you have a drought, if you get more than four inches of rain in a really short period of time, you are going to have flash flooding. Now, I know I have a lot of Appalachian folk watching this video right now. A lot of you guys are in shock. Some of you are probably literally scared of rain. You don't want to deal with it anymore. But unfortunately, it is time to go back to not being scared and being prepared. I need everybody that lives even close to a watershed in eastern Kentucky, I need you to pack your bags and get ready to go. If you can see your creek rising this evening or tomorrow morning or any time in the near future, you need to go before it comes out of the banks, okay? I think we all learned last time that it's not okay to wait. Get ready now, have a plan, and know what you're going to do when that flash flood warning comes through. Tomorrow looks pretty interesting as we have that cold front coming through that I talked about yesterday. This is actually actually probably going to start some sort of severe weather event up here in the Ohio Valley. Watch how these storms really blow up there around 5 p.m. I also wouldn't be surprised if we have some tornadic activity with these storms because we do have a really enhanced lower level jet stream in place. Lots of cape in the atmosphere as well as we have close to 3,000 joules per kilogram right there where these storms are popping up. Remember this is on Monday at 9 p.m. It starts diving south and at this point it could become a damaging wind event but look it goes through some of the hardest hit areas in Kentucky once again bringing even more rain and I'm concerned about this look at this we have big thunderstorms forming in a line kind of going to the south and east like this so if this bow echo kind of moves to the east a little bit and then this kind of propagates to the east as well and that slides through eastern Kentucky we could be looking at another catastrophic deadly event so this will likely change but it is something to watch a, a, a severe weather event is possible on Monday into Tuesday morning and then possibly another flash flooding event here that we have to watch out for. I don't know about you guys, but all this rain has made me want to go somewhere a little bit calmer. Somewhere with a little bit more of a stable atmosphere. Somewhere like Scotland.
like, I don't know. I think Scotland's good this time of year. And speaking of Scotland, I've got a shout out today's sponsor. Established Titles, the Scottish custom that helps save the planet. With Established Titles, all you weather weenies can officially become weather lords and ladies. This unique Scottish custom allows any individual to buy as little as one square foot of dedicated land so that they can earn the official title of lord or lady. How freaking cool is that? Y'all are going to have to refer to me as Lord Ryan now that I have the official certificate. Each section of land has its own unique plot number so you can actually see its exact location at any time. And if that wasn't awesome enough, Established Titles works closely with global charities such as One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future in order to plant one tree for every single order they receive. Established Titles even sells couple packs with side-by-side -side plots of land that make perfect last-minute gifts for loved ones. So purchase your plot today. You'll be helping out the environment and my channel. And when you use my discount code HALL10 at checkout, you're going to get 10% off your purchase. That's right. Just click that link down in the description. Use code HALL10 at checkout. And you're going to get 10% off and you're going to be a lord or a lady and it's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. Now, let's get back into the video. All right. Looking even further into the future on the Euro model, starting off here on Tuesday, August 2nd at 5 p.m. You can see we still got some moisture hanging around here in the southeastern portion of the U.S. Big Ridge building back up in the central U.S., bringing that heat, that sweltering heat back. And we've still got some moisture over here in the western portion of the U.S. as well. But overall, things are calm. I don't see any big severe weather makers. We do have a cold front coming through on August 4th that could bring some stronger thunderstorms from Missouri up into the Great Lakes region. But nah. Uh, doesn't look that impressive to me. And you can see I can pull this thing out through the 7th, the 8th, the 9th, and nothing really changes. We continue to see moisture kind of propagate over to the north and east of that ridge. We continue to see warm, dry conditions in the central U.S. Now, the good news is, is I believe once we get past August 8th, we are going to start to see a little bit of moisture return into southeastern parts of Texas. I don't see a lot of rain coming, but definitely on the southeastern side, we are going to start to see some of that Gulf of Mexico moisture mix in as we we go later on into August. Once again, talking about our feverish weather pattern, it's hot and it's cold at the same time. On August 2nd, it's going to be almost 20 degrees above average in South Dakota and Minnesota. But look, over here in Nevada, we are significantly below average with our temperatures as we just have that continuous deluge of Gulf of Mexico moisture and scattered thunderstorms. And watch that heat build up and then try to move down to the south and east, but it just can't make it, man. Probably one of the more significant heat waves of the year is going to hit up here in the northeast on August 4th. Temperatures will likely be over over 100 degrees near Boston, and that's without even factoring in the dew point and the feels-like temperature and all that stuff. It's going to be a hot one uh, on Thursday and Friday in the Northeast. It's not going to last for long, though, as a little bit of a cold front comes through and cools you back down to normal. But look at all that returning heat here in the central U.S., Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas. I'm sorry, guys. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. So everywhere in the green and the blue is going to see more rain than usual, and everybody in the brown is going to see less rain than usual. So uh, obviously a lot of green over here in the hard hit areas where we're dealing with flooding. We're also seeing some green over here in the overly active monsoon season in the southwest. But where we need it most, we are still seeing that brown in our drought-ridden areas from Texas all the way back up into portions of Montana. And once again, guys, I don't see any major pattern shift here that's going to alleviate this for the vast majority of Texas anytime soon. But on the eastern and southeastern side, there is a tiny bit of rain on the way, and I do believe that that's going to intensify as we go later on into August as well. So I don't know about central, western, northern Texas, but southeastern Texas, it's coming. There's so much not happening in the tropics that I'm not even going to dedicate an entire section to this. I just want to show you one thing here on the GFS, the 18Z run from yesterday. If we pull this out, you can see that we've got a huge hurricane forming here south of Texas on August 15th at 2 a.m. If you hear about this on social media, disregard it. Okay, this is what happens. Once you get past 200 hours on the GFS, it's la la land. It's goo goo gaga. It's gibberish. It means nothing. This is gone now. Okay, this is no longer a possibility. But the fact that we are seeing these big time uh, goo goo gaga storms popping back up on the GFS means that we are entering a period where it could get a little active out there. Okay, so um, that's all I wanted to say about the tropics. And that's pretty much all I have to say about the entire 
dire weather pattern. Once again, I want to thank you guys for allowing us to accumulate over $50,000 in the Y'all Fund. I'm not going to lie, that, that was a huge surprise. The stickers were a good idea, but we still got a lot of people getting shirts and, and hoodies and stuff like that. So I, I appreciate you guys. It's going to allow us to do a lot. Current plan, I think, is to spend like 20 grand on supplies, uh, spend like 10 grand on just giving people money, like finding people who just need a thousand bucks for this. Uh, $2,000 for this. And then of course, we'll probably have to rent some equipment. We might have to hire some people to operate it. I, I don't know, but I'm allocating like maybe $5,000 towards that. And if we need any more assistance down there, we absolutely will use what's left over. But at the same time, I would like to have about $15,000 left in the fund for the next one. Guys, once again, it could be getting ready to rain a bunch here in Eastern Kentucky again. If it happens in a slightly different area, there could be whole new communities that need help. Or hopefully that doesn't happen, but eventually we're going to have a hurricane and we're going to need to go down there and do the same thing. So I do want to leave ten dollars to $15,000 in there as a cushion for whatever could happen next. But if it's significantly needed, we will drain that account completely. I promise you. Also, I want to say a huge shout out to Established Titles for sponsoring this video. Guys, I got a big team of people behind me and they have been working their butts off during this to help promote our fundraiser, to help promote the Y'all Squad, what we've been doing. And, and it's through these sponsorships that I'm able to keep them on board, okay? And, and, and make, make sure everybody's paid. And, and make sure that we're a good uh, company to work for. So if you support my channel, if you support what I do and everybody on my team, make sure you support the companies that sponsor us, establish titles. It's cool. Become a lord or a lady. I mean, who doesn't want to do that, right? Super huge shout out to all of our members over here. Thank you guys for being a part of the channel. Y'all, it might be a couple days before I post another video because I'm going to be out there in the flood mud helping people move stuff and giving people money and, and delivering supplies. I, I don't know exactly how long I'll be out there doing that but for at least two or three days so it might be a second before i have another video just make sure you subscribe turn notifications on and you'll know as soon as i'm back all right okay i'll see you in the next one goodbye Ooh.